Hello everyone and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Now today I'm testing out another car from Lexus Guildford, a 2018 RX 458 Long. Now this car has several talking points, but before I go into any of those, what I think I'll do first is I'll remind you of some of the key information. As previously mentioned, this is a 2018 Lexus RX 450HL. It has been extended at the rear to accommodate its new seven-seat configuration. Additionally, it features Lexus model year 2018 updated design language and technology, as well as Lexus self-charging hardware and electric-only mode. The RX 450 Hybrid L is Lexus full-size all-wheel drive SUV in the UK and comes in only three versions. As this version of the RX can't be spec'd in F-Sport guys, it comes in SE, Luxury and Premier, with this being a luxury. Let's now move to its powertrain. The bonnet can be unlatched using the catch on the driver's side and then lifted up after depressing the latch underneath. It is powered by the same hybrid powertrain that is found in the standard RX 450H. Front and rear electric motors that provide 165 brake horsepower and 67 brake horsepower respectively. These are twinned with a front mounted 3.5 litre V6 that produces 258 brake horsepower and 335 newton meters of torque. The total output is also the same at 305 brake horsepower, but due to the car's added weight of 105 kilograms to 2,205 kilograms and increased length of 110 millimeters to 5,000 millimeters, the 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time has been reduced by 0.3 seconds to 8 seconds, with the top speed also being reduced by 12 miles per hour to 112 miles per hour. This specific car is fitted with the optional 20-inch, 5-spoke, dark silver machined alloy wheels, front and back, one of three options. So I think it's probably about time to move on to some of the main topics of discussion with this car in a real-world capacity. Those, of course, being the rear seats. So if we move over to the car, we can already see that it's a fairly long thing. As I said in the opening piece just a second ago, it is five meters long. Um, so if we move into the rear, First of all, I have to say that the front seats are exceptionally comfortable in Lexus tradition um, and you have loads of space, both in terms of legroom um, and also in terms of the, the space between each seat. Now, in the rear, these uh, can be pushed f uh, back and forth using a bar underneath. They are manually adjustable. Um, this button here can be... Um, this. Uh, lever here can be used to tilt them forward so we can access the rear. First of all, I want to just get into the rear and show you. So. This is actually a fairly comfortable position. We've got some notches built into the back here. They're actually quite deep. They kind of help um, the sort of seating position and comfort in the rear of the car. So this is a quite comfortable position um, in the rear. The front seats can, of course, be moved forwards quite a lot as well. All the controls are actually just down here. I don't know if you can see them just through there. I think that um, in terms of my driving position in the front, the front seats would actually be moved forward by quite a bit. Um, so that's even more legroom. So now looking back inside the car again, we can focus on basically the entire reason for this car. And that's the extra seats that are just behind those. So these are known as the third row seats here. At the moment, of course, the third row or the seats behind these that we see back here, they aren't accessible at all. So we actually have to do move those forward which is actually quite easy and that's the furthest that these seats go forward um, and then all we have to do is pull this up and the rears will come down on their own and then we can just pull those forward um, the rear the very rear the third row seats the new seats they are pretty much full seats they're a little bit shorter uh, than the ones here that we've just seen there are cup holders in the center and we've also got um, a few little controls over there for ventilation, um, heating, that kind of stuff. Um, the space in the rear, as we can see with this seat here, uh, there's only going to be, I mean, a couple more inches um, extra leg room from there. So in terms of being a fully, fully sized adult, the third row seats are going to be fairly, pretty much inaccessible. I mean, if I get in myself, we can use a little step down here. They're not too hard to get into, in all honesty. But uh, when we're inside, there's really no legroom whatsoever. And if we pull these forward, their position, I mean, I can't even get my uh, legs in at all. And this is the furthest forward that they can go with the front seat being in a comfortable driving position. And getting out, I have to sort of contort my body to do it, but it can be done. After contorting myself to actually be able to get out of the rear, we can then just take one hand and then push these seats back into position. So after moving them back into position, what we have to kind of conclude is that for an adult at least, 
these third row rear seats are fairly unusable. Now with that seat back into position, of course we have a very usable second row, and you even have this centre section here that pulls out, just like it did in the standard one, with uh, dual cup holders. And you've got the ventilation back here as well, and the small pockets here. And uh, even the Mark Levinson speaker system that uh, extends around to the sides. So this second row section is still a very, very usable area. But then of course what we have to take into consideration is that these rear seats are sitting directly over the rear axle, which I can imagine for anyone who is sitting in there is going to be a fairly bumpy ride. Now, this section before, of course, is the course that the car has been extended by about 110 millimeters over the previous cars I've said before. Now, all of that's going to be extension here at the rear. Now, you'd expect there to be more storage capacity in that case, but actually, if we take the key and have a look inside, the storage capacity here is very limited, so we can do that with the key. So this is a brand new car, so we've got things unwrapped still. Um, now this is basically the entire storage capacity of the boot if you're trying to use all seven seats. Now it's around about 167 litres if I can remember correctly. And it's very not, it's not really not that deep at all. So the storage space in the standard RX is over 500 litres. So you're having to compromise quite a lot for this setup. Now of course you can move these seats forward. Um, if you do that at the top of my memory you still only get to around 400 litres of storage space because these are actually quite uh, far back into the car and this is quite a shallow area anyway. So that even with these seats down, you're still lacking in space in comparison to the standard RX. One positive that can be drawn from the extension of the wheelbase is that this car has quite significantly more overall storage capacity than the standard RX. I believe the standard RX has around 1500 litres, but with the third and second rows laid flat, I think you have over 100 litres more in this car. Now, in terms of this car's driving ability, I have already made a really extensive video on the standard RX 450H where I go into detail and I talk at length, as usual, um, about all of the kind of things that I found about it. So in this part of the video, all I really want to do is focus on the very specific things I found about uh, this specific car. Now, a couple I'm going to bring up at the beginning are going to be negative, but then we're going to bring up some positives as well. So specifically about this car is that um, under the uh, steering wheel, there's a bit of plastic that bulges out. And I guess that's to uh, protect the mechanism or something because this has got a fully electrically adjustable steering wheel, which is actually a positive and I'll move on to later. But in this, if you like to sit quite close to the wheel or if you have fairly long legs like I do, what you find is that your leg is constantly banging against this bulge component. And rather than just being a bit annoying, it's actually quite dangerous because it can uh, obstruct the uh, free flow of the free movement of your foot transitioning between the pedals. So there's that first of all. Secondly, the armrest in the centre is maybe a little bit high. I found it kind of getting in the way a little bit, but other than that, if you're just going to drive with one arm, it's very comfortable because obviously all the leather has got an extra le um, level of padding underneath it and that goes for the steering wheel and on the, every, on the doors, on everything. It's very comfortable, but it can get in the way a little bit. Like for now, for example, what I'm finding is that my left elbow is pressing against it and it's kind of obstructing the free flow of my left arm. Despite being over two tons and five meters long, you know, it's not a small car by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually very easy to drive and that comes in uh, several forms. The first is its sort of ease of maneuverability. On a normal driving road in the UK, and we don't have the largest uh, lanes over here, um, what you find is that uh, you're able to position the car very well and you're able to maneuver the car very well. The steering is very light um, and you know, you're able to drive a very large car very easily with one hand. Um, so that obviously comes in its maneuverability physically through the steering wheel and also the visibility um, provided by the windows uh, and the mirrors. Secondly, the car doesn't feel stifled at all in terms of its performance. Now, what you have to remember when you drive a Lexus is that unless you're driving one of their specifically named F-Sport cars, you're not driving a car that's designed for actual performance. You're driving a car that has been designed for luxury, refinement and comfort. Those are the mandates of Lexus, at least in my opinion. Of course, if you get to the RCF and the uh, LC models and the future LCF Sport models, 
they will be motorsport inspired and that'll be a bit of a different matter. And with that in mind, really there's no doubting that this car has very good usable performance. There are one or two negatives with the powertrain and transmission setup. Um, one of which is one that's been spoken about quite a lot with the CVT gearbox. There's a little bit of lag in this. So for example, I put my foot on the throttle now and then after a count of two or three, the car decides it's going to accelerate. Um, so there's a little bit of lag when you first press the pedal. It's not very responsive in that respect. Um, and secondly, at low speeds, the car can be very jerky and quite jolting. Despite those two criticisms, I have to reinforce that the uh, general real-world usability of the performance is very good. An example of this is when I did a short motorway test uh, yesterday that I didn't film. The car can very easily accelerate from you know, 30 or 40 up to 60 or 70 and then hold itself there throughout the duration of your journey. There's absolutely no issue for that whatsoever. I'm not sure if the brakes have been enhanced to uh, cope or deal with the extra weight of the car, but the braking of this uh, long wheelbase RX450 hybrid is actually something I really have to compliment on the car and compliment Lexus for. You know, it's, it's extremely reassuring and you can do it very progressively. Being a model year 2018 car, the car also comes with uh, Lexus improved and enhanced infotainment system with the larger screen. Um, I did go through all of that in my previous video, so I won't show too much of it now. It has the same uh, kind of layout and configuration and physical interface here with the kind of retro-ish um, mouse and the way that it snaps, the kind of snap to function on the screen itself. Um, once again, the speakers are very good, they're related to this. I'm not sure if this has got the full 15 speaker Mark Levinson system, but even if, if this is just the standard system, it's actually very, very good. It's got good signal strength on the DAB digital radio, um, and in terms of moving through the different option screens and loading new options, new radio stations, it's very responsive. Because I've already made two videos on the standard RX450H, I don't really want to say too much more about this car. You can find all the other information in the other videos that I've made. Before I sign off, I want to say a huge thank you to Lexus Guildford for loaning me the car for a couple of days. Um, they have a great selection of cars, so if you're in the area, make sure you go and check them out. All of their contact details are in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content, and until next time, thanks for watching.